replace a baseball club in Brooklyn during the coming season, and yesterday signed a 10-year contract for Washington Park, the old home of the Brooklyn National League Club. The Outlaws have arranged for the building of a concrete and steel grandstand, which will seat 18,000 persons. The officers and backers of the new Brooklyn Club are Robert B. Ward of New Rochelle, President, Walter Ward, Treasurer, and John M. Ward, Secretary and Business Manager. President Gilmore announced yesterday that the new club had substantial financial backing and expected to put a first-class ball club at Washington Park. When President Ebbets of the Brooklyn Club was asked about the invasion of Brooklyn by the Federal League last night, he said, This is a free country. I did not build a fence around Brooklyn. But let me tell you one thing. They will get a fight, and a good one, too. New York Times, February 14, 1914. Brooklyn baseball fans will see many familiar faces when the Tip Tops play the Pittsburgh team this afternoon. Baron Netzer, who used to pitch for the Dodgers when Washington Park was their stamping grounds, will be in the box for Pittsburgh, while Tommy Seaton, who has often appeared at Washington Park for the Phillies, will pitch for the Tip Tops. The Wards, who own the Brooklyn team, feel confident that the new club at Washington Park will be a success, and they stand ready to give unlimited financial backing to the new venture. President Robert Ward stated last night, I firmly believe there is room for another major league body. Whether or not the enterprise will be a success remains to be seen, but so far the public has welcomed the Federal League much better than any of us dared to hope when our organization was being formed. None of us expects to get fabulous returns from our investment, and it may be years before we make any profits. Personally, I think Brooklyn will make its running expenses this year. I am in baseball for good. I love the game and shall spend every minute I can spare with the team. New York Times, May 11th, 1914. The Federal League, which has been threatening to locate in Brooklyn at its own peril for some time, burst into public view at Washington Park yesterday. The youngsters seem to be doing very well, thank you. The Brooklyn Tip Tops played Pittsburgh, and the Tip Tops lost their opening game by a score of two to nothing. Flossy opening ceremonies were served with the ball game, and a good time was had by all. There was a parade all around the field. The Brooklyn players carrying a flag which covered two or three acres. There was a brass band in the lead, dressed in the old uniforms of the Continental Army. Shannon's band refused to be disloyal to Charlie Ebbets and wouldn't play for the outlaws. A crowd of about 15,000 sat in, but the stands were not all filled. The new stands are up to date and roomy, and the home of the new club is just as pretentious as any of the major league plants. The populace gave the new league a good send-off, and had fish horns and rattlers to make an occasion as noisy as possible. All the first families of the Gowanus section witnessed the game from the gas house and from the windows of the adjoining apartments. Gazing at the players of the two teams was like looking through an old baseball album. There were many familiar faces. Many of the age-worn vets now in the Federal set have the edge on Lillian Russell when it comes to hiding their years. Davy Jones, Eddie Lennox, Rebel Oaks, Danny Murphy, and Artie Hoffman have all taken a bath in the Fountain of Youth and came up strong. The band played that tune about Rip Van Winkle, but the bandman said that it had no reference whatever to the age of any of the players. The Brooklyn team is going to train its patrons right. 
Knowing what some of the fans say about the players and umpires at the polo grounds, the wards are going to put the soft pedal on the general drift of the conversation. They have painted a big sign on the right field wall which reads, Baseball players are all human and therefore love applause. If you want a winning team, root for them, speak well of them to your friends, and while we are here, let us all be clean of speech so that the ladies may find it pleasant to come often. There, take that. Now will you be good? Some baseball fans will take exception to that remark about all the players being human. Some of them are commonly known to be almost human. New York Times, May 12, 1914.